Hello, everyone, and welcome to this pre-conference session of AAC in the Cloud. We're excited to have you here with us. Today, we'll be, we will be hearing from Naomi, and she will be sharing a presentation on fostering independence for all AAC users in all areas of life. So we will turn things over to her. Thanks, Naomi. Thanks. Welcome everyone to my presentation on fostering independence for AAC users in all areas of life. I would like to thank Cough Drop for choosing this topic to be a part of AAC in the Cloud 2021. Please note that word speak in this presentation refers to any form of communication. I do not differentiate between AAC, sign, speech and other forms of communication because they are all just different ways of speaking. As a part-time AAC user I speak whether I use mouthwords, verbal speech, AAC or signed English. Independence is not something that you can force. It is not something you can make someone be. It is something you should always strive for though. Teaching skills that will allow a user to be less dependent on support people and more dependent and confident in themselves and their own capabilities. With independence comes risk. AAC users have the right to take risks and have the right to fail. Failure is an opportunity to learn. If from a young age we show users how to ha handle failure then when they do they will be able to deal with it. Failure is usually always an option. Communication Robust communication is a basic human right. Without communication people cannot easily access all the other human rights guaranteed in a free country independent of other people. It is a right that all people have no matter their age or diagnosis. No matter what has been predicted about what they will or will not do in the future. No one can predict the future, not even the best of professionals. We can't read the minds of non-speaking people to know what they are taking in and what they would say if they had adequate means of communication and we can't hold back someone who has trouble communicating in any way by not offering them AAC. Even if they can speak all the words one could ever want them to, like myself. AAC will not hinder the development of verbal speech if that is the most efficient way for a person to communicate all that is in their minds. Robust communication fosters independence if lots of modeling is done and self-advocacy, sensory regulation and emotion regulation skills are taught to be used independent of reward or punishment. The internal and external rewards of being heard, having what you heard honored and being able to help yourself out when things are hard are much better long-lasting rewards that don't rely on others to give them the rewards. Every AAC user has something to give. We must see their strengths and help them develop them along with new skills. Remember to talk about their strengths and what they can do before you talk about what they need help with. In doing this you will show them that they have them, that their life doesn't boil down to a diagnosis or a lot of things that they can't do. 
In doing this you will show others that, too. Think of how you would like to be spoken about anytime you speak about the AAC user whether they are present or not. And remember they are always, always, always their chronological age and treat them that way. You can like to do things of any age, toys, movies, videos, games or TV shows do not have a maximum age on them. So if they like something that is just what they like not how old they are. Now we are going to talk about the things that can be done to foster independence in any place, at any time. The first and most important thing is that AAC should always be with the user, in their reach, at all times, in all places. It should never be taken from the user. We will talk more about this later. If the device becomes a danger to themselves or others then a low-tech backup that has been modeled to the user when they are calm must be immediately given to the user and the device returned to the user as soon as possible. Taking a device away should only be done if it becomes a physical danger, at no other time. AAC should never be taken away because 1. The user is annoying you. 2. You think that they are not using it properly. It is the user's voice and it is their choice how to use it. If they are talking when they are supposed to be listening do what you would do with a speaking child, if it's not abusive. 3. They are pressing too many buttons or the same button too many times, that is how they learn where their words are. 4. They are stimming with the device. Stimming is a healthy thing that neurodiverse people do too. To feel happiness and joy. They are regulating emotions or sensory input. They are calming themselves. There are a number of other reasons for stimming that I will not get into. Stimming does not harm anyone, so why stop it? They are not giving the answer you think they should. It's their voice, their choice. They might just blow your mind away if they are allowed to say what they choose, not what you expect. You want them to use it at a later time. If you had a speaking person, what would you do because you can't take their voice away to stop them from talking. You also can't turn the volume down on or off on a speaking person. Reward punishment. Taking an AAC device away so the person will use another form of communication or so that they will use it when the therapist comes is not something you could do with a speaking person. Using an AAC user's device as reward or punishment in any way is wrong because you can't do that with a speaking child's voice. Hiding a device so a person will speak is not right either. If you can't or wouldn't do it with a speaking person, you shouldn't do it with an AAC user either. 
They are refusing, saying no, I don't like that, I don't want to do it, or other things. Children have to learn that they have a right now say no for the prevention of abuse which is higher among people who use AAC than other people and the perpetrators are usually people who they know. No is an acceptable word anytime. How you choose to deal with refusal will teach the child whether or not their words mean something and if they can say no to anyone. Model, talk to the user using AAC, wherever you are whenever you can, as much as possible. Speaking children learn how to speak by hearing speech everywhere, from everyone. AAC users learn to use AAC by seeing and hearing it used all around them. They also learn that their way of speaking is equal to all other ways to speak. Model Model and model some more and when you get tired of modeling keep modeling. Model on a separate device if possible. Everyone around the user should model. They should also be taught that they cannot touch the user's device without the user's consent and must give it back if the user asks for it and how the user will give and withdraw consent. Even parents, therapists, teachers and so on must get consent to take the user's device each and every time and immediately give it back when the user asks for it. Accept all forms of communication. The first form of communication that you understand is the one that should be honored. Don't ask for another form of communication. If you don't understand, ask the user to clarify, but they get to choose how to clarify. You can say maybe your device will help me understand you better. Children we try that, but it's their voice and they get to choose how to use it. Ways we communicate speak, probably not all of them, verbal speech, word approximations, sign language, home signs, AAC, vocalizations, body language, facial expressions, pointing at something someone, looking at something someone. Pushing something someone away, throwing something, pulling, grabbing something someone, taking someone to something, meltdowns, shutdowns, gestures, laughing, crying, screaming, yelling, echolalia, pushing lots of buttons on an AAC system. Now we will talk about building independence at home. Home should be a safe place where a person is accepted no matter what. Home should be somewhere free of the need to be anyone but oneself. AAC should eventually become a way of life at home. There should, not at the beginning but as time goes on, not be modeling time, it should just happen, like speech happens with anyone else. Hand over hand should never be used. Hand over hand takes away the child's right to have control over their own bodies. It tells the child that it is okay for anyone to grab them and do whatever they like with them and they can't let go. 
Hand under hand should be used sparingly. Hand under hand is when your hand is under the person's hand that way the person can withdraw their hand, thus withdrawing consent at any time. This is a measure to allow independence and prevent abuse. Hand over hand also puts words in a child's mouth and is thus not them choosing to communicate. Every time you use hand under hand or touch the user in your life you must get consent and consent can be withdrawn at any time through body language, vocalizations and all the other ways that we have talked about communication happening. Hubs, kisses and eye contact are always optional even if they are culturally appropriate. Eye contact for some people is just not possible and should never be forced. Modeling is always done without any expectation that the user do anything including look at the device. The user will still learn and for some people looking away fidgeting, walking around, rocking, in other words stimming helps them concentrate. Time should always be left for the user to speak if they wish to, about 5-10 seconds, which can seem like a long time. Start at 5 seconds and work up to 10 seconds wait time. You may have to count in your head because 10 seconds of silence for a speaking person can seem like an eternity. Wait time is important for an AAC user because it takes time to process what is said, then to think of what they want to say and then to write their message. It's up to the AAC user if they want to speak. Sometimes a user may choose not to speak and that is fine too. Just as a user has the choice to use their voice, they have the choice not to speak as well. Modeling is as important to an AAC user as hearing mouthwords are to a speaking person. Your user is not going to learn to use AAC unless they see it used and feel it is an accepted means of communication. The standard formula for modeling is that you model one or two words above the number of words that your user is using. Many adult AAC users, myself included, feel that this is not a good formula. People do not learn to make sentences unless they see them made. People do not learn new words if we only stick to the core words of the week month. So I would encourage you to be creative in your modeling. Sometimes as with mouthwords you will only have time for one or two. Other times you will have time for a phrase or a sentence. Do both. Don't think that the user will not get it. Presume that they are competent and have the potential to learn. Get the family involved in using AAC. Don't make kids modelers. Just show them the device. Preferably one that is separate from the one that the user usually uses, and let the kids do what they like. Kids are incredibly creative and will do things adults would never think of doing. Start slow with modeling but eventually modeling should become as much a part of life as speaking is. There should eventually not be modeling time because all you are doing is speaking to the user the way they speak. The first form of communication that is understood is the one that should be honored. 
you can model another but do not ask for another. If you do not understand ask for clarification. All communication is valid, valuable, and equal. When we accept all forms of communication we show people that they are valuable, accepted, loved and cared for unconditionally. It is important for the user to have other people who use AAC and have the same or similar diagnosis in their life. If the user is a child it is important to have adult AAC users in their lives. If they use ASL it is important to have native ASL speakers in your lives. This gives them role models and shows them that they are not alone in their way of communicating. The user also needs to become someone else's role model, not in a social skills group but in a place where they can just enjoy each other's company, preferably with as few caregivers as possible. This could happen on or offline. In one of the last sections we talked about why people stim. Forcing a person to stop stimming makes them do something called masking. Masking is literally pretending to be what society considers normal masking makes a neurodiverse person feel unwanted, not accepted and can lead to mental illness. It is not a healthy thing. Trust me I did it for about 40 years and I am a lot happier flapping my hands, rocking, using echolalia and other things. I can cope with hard things much easier and I can calm myself better. Noise cancelling headphones and fidget toys help too and they go everywhere with me. I have found in my work with children and adults having various abilities that stimming is stopped mainly for the comfort of neurotypical people who are around the neurodiverse people not for the benefit of the neurodiverse people themselves. I would ask why neurodiverse people have to conform to their neurotypical way of doing things when our brains are not even structured to cope with things and take sensory input in in the same way. AAC users should know their strengths what they need help with and what their diagnosis are and what they mean from a very young age. Kids notice they are different at a young age. Knowing these things allows them to feel confident that they have strengths, know when to ask for help and explain their differences to others. Strengths. Areas in which they need help and diagnosis should be in their AAC systems as should words that have to do with them. For example if a child has asthma and needs an inhaler, inhaler should be in their system somewhere where they can find it rather quickly. As has been said before it is important that the user's life not boil down to a bunch of diagnoses and weaknesses. Emphasize their strengths whenever possible. One of the most important things AAC users should learn at the very beginning is how to refuse, how to say no. I don't like that, I don't want to etc. This again is a way to prevent abuse but also a way for them to express freely their feelings about things. No's need to be honored but that doesn't mean that the user always gets what they want.
Honoring means hearing and working together for a solution that everyone can live with. Compliance is not an option unless the user is going to do something that will hurt themselves if the user is to learn that their words mean something. So what do you do when the user refuses? What do you do when the user refuses? Do you always say yes? You should as much as possible. What if the answer is no should you force them to give you absolute, unquestioning compliance? No compliance is not an option unless the user is about to run in front of a car or something that dangerous. So what do you do then? You work together to come up with a solution that you can both agree with. You can say, okay, we won't do that now. Give choices of things they can do right then. You can say, first we read a book, or something that the user chooses, then we go to bed for example. You can talk about how the child is feeling by saying something like how does not being able to go to school feel leave wait time and if nothing is said say I think you might be frustrated because it's Sunday and you can't go to school or you might be sad because you don't get to see your friends or you might be angry because you wanted to ride the bus. Never tell a child what they are feeling but give them lots of options of what you think they might be feeling. That way they will learn how to name and express a variety of emotions. You could ask them why they don't want to do what is being asked or if anything is bothering them that is making it hard for them to do things. This again allows them to express themselves in all kinds of ways. You could ask them if they would rather do something else giving one or more choices that are available at the time. You might say something like, I'm sorry it's midnight and we can't go get a pizza because you are supposed to be asleep. We'll get one for dinner tomorrow night. If it is absolutely necessary that it be done, like medical treatment find ways to help them through it. Fidget toys, music, games, talking. Doing these things rather than demanding compliance helps the user learn life skills like negotiating skills emotion regulation skills and that people can work together to come to a really agreeable solution to a problem and that their thoughts and feelings matter. Okay, you can put up the next slide. Oh, no, the one after that. this slide after that one. Oh, there might not be a slide after that one. Okay, never mind. No one likes to think of emergencies, but we have to even with AAC users. Every AAC user should be as prepared to handle emergencies as independently as their typical aged peers as possible. That means knowing fire, water and outdoor safety rules. Knowing what to do if they get lost. 
Having first aid at the same age their typical age peers start taking first aid courses. Knowing how to call emergency services and knowing their full name, age, birthday, phone number and the name of their caregivers, if they are children or adults who have them and an emergency contact person who is not typically with them. All of these things should be in a folder that is easily accessed on their communication system. All this should be modeled and modeled some more. Part of being independent is knowing what to do if and when something goes wrong. If you cook with your child explain what you do and why for safety. If you go camping explain how you keep yourself safe, including reading a paper map because technology can and does fail when in certain places or during certain emergencies. Your user may not learn everything but they should be taught as much as possible because no matter how much you think you or you and another person are always with them, I can think of multiple situations where that emergency plan will fail. Always have backup emergency plans for the first one. Teach the AAC user to handle emergencies as independently as possible because they may be the only person who can help themselves or you. The slide I thought I had was a slide um, that talks about how to teach AAC users to call uh, emergency services, which I'll send to Melissa later. Along with teaching the user how to handle emergencies, you should equip those who deal with anxiety or panic as well as sensory regulation problems with the tools to cope during any emergency. Equipping the user with sensory tools and emotion regulation skills as well as ways to ask for them and express their emotions during an emergency is important. For example, noise cancelling headphones for fire alarms and other warning alarms. Fidget toys for if you have to stay quiet and still for long periods of time. These should go everywhere with the user. It's Explaining that there might be an emergency where you have to turn the volume off on their device and that that is not for punishment but to keep everyone safe is important. Especially nowadays because there is one emergency where absolute silence is an absolute necessity and could mean life or death. AAC users need to be as prepared as possible for emergencies as anyone else. That is a human right as well. 4.3 Remember most accidents happen in your own home. Warn your child before health care appointments. Let them know what will happen and ask if they have any concerns. Have all health care personnel as well as therapists and teachers speak to your user if they are present. Do not speak about the user as if they are not present. They hear everything that is said about them and nothing should be done about them in their presence without them being involved. If you need to speak about the user without them hearing then make sure that they are somewhere where they can not hear.
for medical purposes it is important to have all body words in your user's system, including private parts. It is also important to have the parts of the opposite sex in the system. Having the private parts of both sexes is important because the user needs to be able to report and talk about abuse, sex and sexuality at an appropriate age level. Users should learn these parts of the body, about abuse and how to report abuse at the same age a typical child b. Modeling of private parts is necessary. If you don't know what and where a word is, you can't use it. People with disabilities are very vulnerable to abuse and are among the highest population in society to be abused. They are usually abused by someone they know so the more you can do to protect the user in your life from being abused or enable them to report abuse the better. Having all body words on the device also allows the user to tell you if they are hurting or something is wrong, talk about their bodies, and as they grow up talk about the feelings that their bodies have. At age 6 I had open heart surgery. In the 1970s it was not common to include children in discussions about their health care. I knew though I am not sure if it was ever said that my whole family and close friends were afraid I was going to die. I also knew that I wasn't supposed to know that. So at age 6 I was trying to help the adults deal with something that I didn't really understand myself and I had no one to talk to about it. It was thought that I was too young to comprehend this fact. And though I didn't fully understand the concept of death, I understood I might not wake up. Never make the assumption that the AAC user you support won't understand what is said in the doctor's or therapist's office. This is only one of many stories I had like this. This psychosian mainly talks about school but it can apply to homeschool and adult programs and supported work volunteer settings. School is a place where users can learn lots of independence how to self-advocate, negotiate with peers and teachers. Getting sensory regulation and emotion regulation skills met independently. Refusal should be handled the same way talk about in the home section. Because children with disabilities are so vulnerable to abuse by people they know, Absolute compliance will only teach them that school or program staff can treat them however they want and they must listen unquestionably. This is a dangerous situation for any student or adult living with a disability. IEP or program planning for this section I am going to refer to IEPs but any plan for individuals who use AAC as children or adults should involve them as much as possible. They are at school and they know what they need better than anyone else.
nothing about them without their input in some way. This can be done by having them at the IEP meeting as a participant even early on in school. Video or screenshots taken at home or by the teacher. Things you can ask the student. What are your strengths? What are you good at at school? What do you need help with? What do you think would help with that? You could offer suggestions. What do you like about school and why? What do you not like about school and why? Students should know what is in their IEP and how to get their needs met if the school is not following their IEP. Their accommodations and modifications should be somewhere in their AAC system. Having good communication between you, the user and the staff at school is important and knowing what happens during the school day is important. All of these things will help you help the AAC user in your life learn to get their needs met independent of others. AAC should be a part of everything done in the school. AAC should be a part of everything done in the school. AAC should not just happen in speech. 6.7 All staff working with your child should be aware of the fact that the device or system should never be taken from the user and should have knowledge of the communication bill of rights. The user should be taught about the communication bill of rights and it should be somewhere in their system as well. A communication passport would be good to have for new staff or supply staff. Users should have the things they need to regulate sensory input and practice emotion regulation skills as independently as possible. These should be in their IEP. Refusal should be handled. Refusal should be handled the same way talk about in the home section. Because children with disabilities are so vulnerable to abuse by people they know, absolute compliance will only teach them that school or program staff can treat them however they want and they must listen unquestionably. This is a dangerous situation for any student or adult living with a disability. There are many ways that we can build independence for AAC users in the community. Helping community members understand different ways of communicating. It is important to be involved in the community with as little help with caregivers as possible. Involvement in inclusive community activities such as guiding, scouting, 4-H, summer reading clubs, at the public library as well as and book clubs and gyms so on are important. If community members don't see AAC users in their midst then it won't seem like they belong to their typical peers. 
helping community members become good at communicating with AAC users, communication partners, but I don't think we should differentiate between being a good communicator with an AAC user than with anyone else. So I really don't like the term communication partner. It is important for the user to have friends in the community who are not designated helpers. It is important to have low-tech backups for times when technology fails or when high-tech is not usable. It is important for AAC users to have typical friendships, to have people in their lives who are neither paid or are volunteers in their lives. Inviting people from school, work, community programs to the user's house is a good way to build relationships with others because the user can share their interests and hobbies. If the user needs it make visits short or structured. Inclusion is important. Inclusion is more than just being a body that is present, it is being as valued and involved in an activity as anyone else. Inclusion allows one all people to get to know each other. To the user to hear words used that they might not typically hear used, and for the user to use new words. 3. To give the user and everyone around them a sense of pride and belonging. 4. Helps prevent abuse. When there are lots of people watching who are not all non speak someone is able to speak up if something is wrong with the way the user is being cared for. Are segregated settings ever okay? Yes, although inclusion is preferred, even in educational settings because there is so much more for non-speaking people in them. It is sometimes nice to just be around people who are like for fun, not social groups. Things like support groups, book clubs, clubhouses, Challenger Baseball and Special Olympics or Paralympic are perfect settings for this type of interaction to happen. Special events like parties, family gatherings and holidays can be really hard for some AAC users. Here's how you can help make them go well and allow the user independence. It is important to back up the user when they don't wish to hug, be touched, make eye contact etc. Non-speaking people can help the user learn that they have autonomy over their own bodies and help others learn that they must get consent before touching the user or their device. To include the user in special events a few things need to be thought through. Does the user need some structured time and if so how can that happen in what is typically an unstructured event? How is the user to be included in the conversation of speaking people who often speak 
faster than the user can be involved. Do you need to modify activities so that the user can participate or have activities that interest the user that involve others? Do you need to modify a does the user need short gatherings or smaller gatherings? How can we make this happen? Does the user need a safe space to go if they need a break? Where can they go to get away from the action? Is the vocabulary the user needs in their device and has it been modeled? Food and drink. Names of who will be attending. Refusal words. Customary greetings for the holidays. This is the end of my presentation. I hope you have enjoyed it. Please feel free to contact me with any questions. Thanks everyone for being here for this session. We'll go ahead and close this now. Thanks for Naomi for her time and for her insights and experience. We appreciate all that she has shared today. Um, please feel free to jump into another pre-conference session to take a peek at some of the things that are available there. Or you can see the live sessions that will be going on uh, June 23rd and 24th. Thanks very much and we'll see you later.